kids uh, welcome to another math video and you're probably in the right place even though this is not the lesson for today but I do want to show you that in your uh, problem set book the one with the blue spine the learn book uh, this lesson 8 reference sheet in module 4 which is in my book on page 167 the reference sheet is very handy with all of the conversions for standard units of measure and metric conversions so that you can do today's lesson, which is actually Eureka Math, Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 19, Homework. And so if you can keep that uh, reference page handy, it will help you as you go through these conversions because today's objective is to convert measures involving whole numbers and solve multi-step word problems. And so uh, a lot of students don't have everything memorized yet, and hopefully you will memorize it very soon because it's helpful when you have your state tests and iReady tests or map tests or whatever you're using in your district. Uh, you really just kind of need to know those conversions. So anyway, uh, we're going to get started. Lesson 19, homework. Uh, convert express your answer as a mixed number if possible. That means don't leave any improper fractions there. Uh, the first one is largely done for us. So we have our two feet. Don't worry, you've done this process before. Let me remind you what happens. You take your old measure that you know. We're going to convert it into um, a new unit. Okay, this is called the unit. And so we're going to do that by multiplying the number that you had by one of the old unit. Okay, we've gone over this before. Again, you should kind of know what you're doing. Go watch the problem set if you don't. And then we're going to convert by having the equivalent of the new unit. And I do all this, U-N-I-T, I can spell. I do all this in the problem set video. And so you should really know this, and I want you to apply that strategy right there when you're setting up your problems. They don't give us a whole lot of room to do this, but I would certainly do the 2 times 1 over 3 if I needed to do any cross-canceling. Uh, it might help you to have your slashing. Anyhow, this one's really easy, and we get our 2 thirds. There's no cross-canceling necessary, and that's your final answer. So it's 2 feet equals two-thirds of a yard. So that's what we're doing. Okay, um, so we have our six feet equals how many yards. They give us a little bit. Take your six, copy it, times one of the old unit. So what is one foot in relationship to a yard? Well, it is one-third. So we're not using whole numbers with our equivalent amounts like we did when we were changing from uh, a larger unit to a smaller unit. But this is a smaller unit going to a larger unit. That means we're going to have less of the larger unit. So on this one, you've got your 6 times 1 over 3, which is 6 thirds. Okay, you can also cross cancel here and not have to do that, but it's all the same when we are multiplying with 1. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and that's your final answer. So hopefully you got that. Your homework should be done, by the way. Did I say that already? I don't think so. Not today. On this video, uh, you should not be copying from me. You should give it a try, struggle a little bit, see if you can apply this, uh, this strategy, this formula, and do it all on your own, and then put the video back on and check your answers. Next step, we're going to take our 5 times 1 inch, and then we're going to do that, copy the 5 again, multiply by what is 1 inch in relation to the new unit? Well. There are 12 inches in a foot, so one inch is 1 twelfth. Multiply across and you get 5 twelfths because we're talking about 5 inches. So 5 twelfths of a foot would be our converted answer, 5 twelfths of a foot. Next one, 14 times 1 inch times 1 of the old. Same number times the equivalent of the new. So again, we're talking about feet from inches. Same conversion factor, it's 1 12th. I don't think I put my label, but you should, my bad, put it there because we don't want to forget what we're changing to. Now for this one, instead of having a proper fraction, we have 14 twelfths, which is an improper fraction. 
And um, if I was to take this and do 14 twelfths off to the side, I might say, hey, both of those are even. So Mrs. Setnis's rules for simplifying, if I can simplify before I do my multiplication or division, all even numbers are divisible by two. So I could do 14 divided by two is seven, 12 divided by two is six, and then I end up with a one and one sixth as my mixed number answer. If I was to do a 14 divided by 12, which you certainly can do, 12 fits into 14 one time, but there are two left over out of 12. And what you have now is 2 twelfths, which is not in simplest form, while 1 sixth is. So here you would have to divide by 2 anyway to get 2 divided by 2, which is 1, and 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So you choose the way you want to do it. I really like to simplify before I do the work because this is easier than this one. Okay, hopefully you got 1 and 1 sixth. And uh, before I turn it, I'm just going to uh, do this one. So we've got our 7 ounces, so 7 times 1 of the old, 7 times the equivalent of the new. Now we have a new unit here. We've got ounces and pounds. How many ounces and pounds? Use your reference sheet. There are 16 ounces in a pound. So 1 ounce is only 1 16th of a pound. So that's your scale factor. When you multiply seven times one, we're gonna end up with a proper fraction that can't be simplified because there's uh, no factor that goes evenly into both. So we leave that there. For the next one, we're gonna take our 20 times one ounce and then uh, 20 times the same conversion or, or scale factor because um, one ounce is one sixteenth of a pound. Uh, don't forget your new label. Now on this one, if we end up with 20 over 16, we want to simplify that. So I want to make this easier before I do my division. So notice that both of these are a, a multiple of four. So if I was to use four to reduce or simplify, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. This is a whole lot easier to divide, and I get my simplest form in one step with my new label. Hopefully you got 1 and 1 fourth. Now I finally have to turn it. All right, turn that. And let's use our formula yet again. 1 times 1 pint. One times one is one, that's why it works. One times the equivalent. So one pint is only half of a quart because there are two pints in a quart. Okay, so I multiply one times one and that one is pretty short and easy. And this next one, the last one on the front, four is the number you have times one of the old unit pint and then we have four times same conversion factor or scale factor. It's going to be one half of a quart with our new label. And then four over two with our new label. That can be divided. Four divided by two is two. And that's your converted answer there. So hopefully you got those answers. Now you're ready for some word problems, simple word problems. Marty buys 12 ounces of granola. What fraction of a pound of granola did Marty buy? So we've got 12 ounces, and we need to know how many pounds is that. So if you set it up like this, then you've already got your formula kind of in place. If you know how to use it, 12 times one of the old unit. Copy your 12. What is one ounce in relation to pounds? Remember that there are 16 ounces in a pound, so one of them is 1 16th of a pound. And then we have our multiply across the top, 12 times 1 is 12, 16 on the bottom, and both of these are divisible by what? I know some people said 2, but somebody maybe said 4. 
So you can actually divide 12 by 4 and 16 by 4. That's bigger than 2. If you divide by 2, you'll have to divide again. But if you divide by the greatest common factor the first time, you get your simplest form answer in one step. If you can get to 3 fourths pound of granola, um, either way, that is fine. If a whole pound of granola costs $4, how much did Marty pay? Well, he didn't buy a full pound. So we're going to use, this is um, a fraction of a number. Three-fourths of $4, because that's what he's going to pay. So write that, this is your kind of set up your expression. Write that now, solve the bottom, 4 times 1. Notice that we have four fourths, which will give you one, and then you have your total cost. So three dollars is what Marty paid. And label it. Okay, don't forget to click subscribe. If this is helping you, you should be a subscriber. Just do it. Click subscribe. All right, number three, Sarah and her dad visit Yo-Yo Yogurt again. This time, the scale says that Sarah has 14 ounces of vanilla yogurt in her cup. Her father's yogurt weighs half as much. There's a number right there in word form. How many pounds of frozen yogurt did they buy all together on this visit? Express your answer as a mixed number, which we always want to do. All right, so we have Sarah, who has 14 ounces. Sometimes it's just easier to set them up um, this way when you are reading through it and just go, okay, I know what half of 14 is. Again, fraction of a number. That is seven ounces. This is the dad. And so we're simply just setting them up, giving, uh, taking what they give us and adding it. 21 ounces altogether. And now we have to take that and convert it to pounds. So 21 ounces equals how many pounds? Because right here they're saying, don't give us the answer in ounces, so don't give up yet. Take your 21, multiply it by one of the old unit. Take your 21, multiply it by the equivalent of the new. Remember that one ounce is 1 16th of a pound. Now we have 21 sixteenths. Remember how they said, show your answer as a mixed number? This is an improper fraction. You can't leave it like that. So 21 sixteenths can be flipped around to show that we have a full 16 sixteenths in here for one. And then the difference between, and so the, the simple way of saying it is subtract. Subtract the difference between 21 and 16 which is five. 16 is your label, so that stays the same. So one and five sixteenths pounds of frozen yogurt, fro-yo, is what they buy. Okay, last one. An art teacher uses one quart of blue paint each month. In one year, how many gallons of paint will she use? All right, so we have one quart each month. How many months are in a year? 12, so it's 12 quarts. So in one year, let's change this and make it gallons. 12 quarts equals how many gallons? So we're gonna use our same conversion we've been doing the whole time. Take your number, multiply it by one of the old unit. Take that same number, multiply by what the equivalent is in the new unit. So what is one quart in relation to gallons? It's one fourth because there are four quarts in a gallon. Now we've got 12 over four, which is three gallons. So how many gallons of paint? Three gallons of paint. Ta-da! You are done. Nice job. Pat yourself on the back. Success. And we'll see you on the next video.
Bye for now.